How's it going everyone, it's Juan Romero here from Switchwatch, back with another review. Today it's a game called West of Loathing, which was provided to us by Asymmetric Games, so thank you very much for that. Let's find out then if this one's worth the hard earned cash. Let's get into it. Asymmetric's first project was a game called Kingdom of Loathing, which was a browser-based MMORPG. It built up a community of over 1 million players worldwide and has become a cult classic over time. It was therefore really exciting to see what Asymmetric could do next, as both of these games have a very similar style. The story in West of Loathing starts off with you looking to head west, and what becomes apparent right away is you're able to choose your own motivations as to why. It may be to seek fortune, or it may also be because you're sick of living at home in some tiny place with your folks. Now, I really enjoy games where you can, to a certain extent, control parts of the dialogue and the story. Let me make it clear that the story and the writing here is one of the best things about this game. Of that, there is absolutely no doubt. The writing's superb, and the dialogue between characters is just so funny that the game kept me completely glued all the way through. I couldn't wait to see who I was going to meet next. Would it be Cactus Man or some drunk who loves drinking whiskey? Maybe it'll be a horse salesperson who's not very good at selling horses. In fact, he was so bad at selling horses that I had to trek to find three that he had lost. Weirdly, my reward was 300 meat per horse, meat being the game's currency, just in case you didn't know which meant I made a tiny 900 meat. The problem was a salesman then wanted to sell me one of these horses for 1k, and I had no choice but to pay this handsome fee as I needed the horse to head west. It's hilarious moments like these that kept me wildly entertained. Now, in terms of the gameplay, West of Loathing is described as a single-player slapstick comedy adventure role-playing game set in the Wild West of the Kingdom of Loathing universe. Honestly, I could not have described the game better myself if I tried. You can choose a cow puncher, melee, bean slinger, which is a caster, or a snake oiler, which is kind of a ranged rogue. Each has differing skills, which can upgrade much like any good RPG throughout the game and while each class has certain specializations is by no means pigeonholes you which is great they're also powerful weapons that you'll discover later on and that will help your class what's really interesting at the beginning is how dialogue absolutely determines your starting skill i won't spoil what they are but suffice to say it's clever in how it's determined much like if you want to play on hard mode you can find a hat in the game with that option now the game auto assigns experience points to the character you choose and it's up to you whether you want this or not. For casual players they may want to leave it as it is as the game will create a balanced character for you even though it's automated. Now for those who are more interested in creating a class with a certain skill set then manual is definitely the way to go. Dialogue while exploring and talking to different NPCs will allow you to pick different skills like being good at lock picking or bartering called dickering here. As you traverse through each area, which there are nearly 100 unique ones, you'll speak to NPCs and have a range of different dialogue options. Make sure you read the dialogue properly because it could be really important to solving a mystery or acquiring a key item. Early on I had to take down a couple of bandits for the sheriff. A key item I needed to trade was a bar of soap. I chose the wrong option by accident and the opportunity had passed me by, much to my dismay. I needed it to trade for a lock to give to the sheriff in town. Now if you mess up a situation like this then you'll need to find an alternative way or move on. Be aware that once you leave the first area on your horse you can't return so make sure you cover as much as possible. Now the game is full of puzzles and mysteries to solve and I absolutely love this part. I couldn't get enough of it. I needed to find a needle for example to perform a certain task and without giving too much away I found it in a funny place. Place. Afterwards you'll get that light bulb moment and know exactly the type of humour this game is going for. I think the game may be a step too far for younger children to understand all of the jokes, goofball gags and such, but for everyone else this will appeal to your inner child 
such is the hilarity of it all. The puzzles are really fun, they're not too difficult, but they're not too easy either. And it will just remind you that you need to sort of read the text because the clues are always there. There are quests which handily come up with the location on the map. Now you can fast travel to each location, each location is fun to explore and to discover new things, of which there are many in the game and your inventory will soon fill up with loads of stuff so make sure you're equipping the right items obviously to give your character the best chance. And sell the stuff that you don't need in the shop so you can make some more meat. Now travelling from place to place often gets interrupted due to enemy battles or treasure to dig up amongst other things. As you progress abilities can be furthered by reading books which leads me nicely onto the battles. Battles unfortunately for me anyway are by far the weakest part of this game. Each fight is turn based and it's all simple stuff, choose your gun, take a shot and your enemy's HP will reduce. They take their turn and try to reduce your HP so on and so forth until one is left standing. Now, depending on the class you choose and the skills that you excel at there is a lot of variety within the enemies also from poisonous snakes to guys with sniper rifles cows skeletons all sorts which you can take down later on obviously when you meet a partner in the game it becomes a little bit more tactical now i like melee so i was going in with the punches i shot my pistol every now and again but casters will do damage from afar it's all really simplistic stuff and was the part of the game i think i least enjoyed that is saying a lot though about the quality of the game elsewhere later on it does get a little deeper which gives you more options in how you approach each attack so it does get better and more challenging. Abilities in some fights will play a significant part in your success or failure. I can't tell you the amount of times I got out of trouble with just lobbing a stick of dynamite at the enemy. If you do die, you get to try again, so it's not all doom and gloom. Moving on to audio, I love the audio in this game. It starts off really quietly, but as you make it out of home and decide to move west, the game breaks into a full western musical track, which feels like you're about to watch a film. As you explore each area, they all have their own music track, which makes each area feel distinct. The sound effects are also really immersive, considering visually that this is quite a simple looking game. Walk past a fireplace and the fire will crackle, or walk into a bar or saloon and the piano player will play you a tune all very authentic sounding and i really did enjoy it in terms of visuals and performance then let's be honest at first look of this game you may not give it a second glance but to do so would be a major disservice while the game is fully drawn in black and white everything has a surprising amount of detail to it i loved walking into a saloon purely because of everything that's going on and there's always little details to look for and clues to pick up within the game which are drawn superbly well number of times I stepped in cow poop for example just made me laugh no idea why I'm not a child that finds toilet humor funny at all nope that is not me at all all right I have a confession I find it all tear inducingly funny now I think it's great that we can play an indie game like this and it can have really nice simple hand-drawn feel but be something you end up loving it's really charming and everything comes together to make a very well-formed package in a day where graphical fidelity seems to be everything I'm really pleased to to see games like this which are able to make an impact now of course in terms of performance this does not push the switch at all so i'm glad to say there's no slowdown so in terms of value then the game is worth the cash it's as simple as that it's 11 bucks and you get a wealth of content and the game which will last you around eight hours in the main campaign it will double that if you are a completionist it's a game you'll want to play again with different classes as the game can play out differently depending on which you choose. You may have missed certain things the first time around. It's such a great adventure that I'd gladly play a game without hesitation. And that really is the best compliment. So in summary then, West of Loathing is one of those games that you go into not expecting much at all. My only previous experience of it was seeing it at EGX and I was watching someone else play. I thought it looked okay but I didn't give it that much thought after that. I went 
into it totally cold, expecting very little. This has taught me a valuable lesson, yet again, never to judge a book by its cover. The game is rich with content, has an excellent and humorous story, which will keep you entertained all the way through with great little brain teasers. The only slight letdown for me are the battles, but it's not even that big a deal as this has so much more to offer. Do yourself a favor and pick this one up because it's one of the best little games on the Switch and one I will not hesitate in recommending. An 8.5 out of 10. Now guys, as always, if you enjoyed this review, then do me a favor, hit that thumbs up button and let me know how much you loved this video. For those of you that are new here, we do plenty of game reviews like this one, hopefully nice and detailed for you. And if you like that, then why not consider subscribing to our channel? We'd love to see you again on the next video. And also, if you've played this game on another system or you're looking forward to it, let me know what you think in the comments section down below. I would love to hear from you. My name's Juan Romero from Switchwatch. Thank you all so much for supporting us. We really appreciate it. You know what I'm going to say, guys. I'll see you again on the next one. Take care.